Welcome to City Music Stories. Here we visit a city somewhere on Earth and look at two musical artists associated with that city. Until requests come for repeating artists, I'm focusing on how the artists got their big break. That might be their first single or their first recorded work. This series is driven by comments, so leave a comment for future videos. Let's get ready to travel now. Today we are going to... Buenos Aires in Argentina, and this is the second time going to the city, and it is the first city to be covered twice. The first time was my choosing. I just wanted to pick a city outside of the U.S. Um, I'd done one before and had a YouTube friend that lived there, and I thought, hey, this is going to be fun. I get a chance to learn something. In the comments on that video, I had a couple YouTube friends offer some more suggestions for the city. Bad Taste Studio suggested a band, and Ricardo Mourinho suggested another. In this video, we have the group La Ringa and the artist Charlie Garcia. Let's revisit this awesome city. Buenos Aires, officially the autonomous city of Buenos Aires, is the capital and largest city of Argentina. The city is located on the western shore of the Rio de la Plata, on South America's southeastern coast. Buenos Aires can be translated as fair winds or good airs, but the former was the meaning intended by the founders in the 16th century by the use of the original name Real de Nuestra Señora Santa Maria del Buen Aire, named after the Madonna of Bonaria in Sardinia, Italy. It's been a while since I spoke some Spanish, so please forgive my pronunciation. Since I had visited the city before in this video series, I wanted to do something a little different for tourism, so I looked up what are some musical attractions or things for music lovers to do in Argentina. To summarize what's being shown on the screen, Buenos Aires is a world-class city with a lot of musical diversity, and looking at this list, there is something that everybody can love. The link is in the description in case you'd like to read more. I want to take a moment and thank my patrons because their contributions each month really make these videos possible. Yeah, you might see ads on here, but the ads don't do as well as Patreon does. If you like supporting any creators like me, please consider it. It's as little as $1 per month and you can pay $3 and $5 for some extra perks and things. I've been sharing weekly videos of live music performances, and that is a lot of fun because live music is happening again outside the city where I live. I'm getting lots and lots of video, and it's going on Patreon. The Ringa is a hard rock Argentine band formed in 1988. They had moderate success with the albums A Donde Me Lleva La Vida and Bailando en Uno Pata between 1993 and 1995. But it was the release of Desperezado por Mil Partes in 1996 that made them nationally famous. In 1988, four young men of Maraderos, Buenos Aires, celebrated New Year's Day playing covers of Creedence Clearwater Revival, Vox Dei, The Animals, Manal, and other bands. Months later, they decided to form a band, and thus La Jaringa was born. In 1989, they started recording what would become their 1991 album entitled Esquivando Charcos, a totally independent production that was made up of nine songs, seven of which were recorded in studio and two live in the rehearsal room. Esquivando Charcos is the first album by Argentine band La Ringa. Till 1991, it was only available in cassette and it was not available in music shops. Although the live versions of these songs can be heard in the album Bailando and Uno Pata, is recorded, distributed, and produced in a totally independent way by the band. And as an independent artist myself, you have to respect the work ethic because what people don't realize about music, that takes a tremendous amount of work and organization. So, thumbs up for this band. <laughs> Going a little deeper into the album, since the band did not have a company to produce the album, they decided to do it themselves. They made 1,000 copies which they sold at their concerts. With the great progress that the band made, 
When they became famous, Polygram suggested to them that it should be re-released. After some doubts, they decided that it was a good idea, and in 1998, Esquivando Charcos was available in stores. The album achieved platinum status in Argentina that year. Looking at the history of the release, it's reasonable why I couldn't find a whole lot of song review, album review type information. I did find one that rated it at 1.5 out of 5, and that's out of one rating, and obviously we can you know, statistically ignore that one. And then another side just didn't have anything at all. From the club of music I heard, the band seems to do an excellent job hitting that hard rock spot somewhere between what mainstream rock was in the 90s and what grunge was. And I really enjoyed the vibe and the energy of what I heard. So make sure you check them out. As we move on to our next artist, if you have an idea for an artist or a city, please let me know in the comments. Charlie Garcia is an Argentine singer-songwriter, musician, and record producer. With a vast and renowned career, he formed and headlined two of the most popular bands in Argentina's rock history, Sui Guineris in the 1970s and Saru Galaran in the 1980s. And he also played a part in some other groups. Since the 1980s, Garcia has worked mostly as a solo musician. His main instrument is the piano, followed by guitar and keyboards. Garcia is also well known for his flamboyant and rebellious personality, as well as his bicolor mustache with one side white due to vitiligo. Garcia first heard the Beatles when he was 13. Having previously only been exposed to classical music and folk, he would describe the Beatles as classical music from Mars. In high school, he met Carlos Alberto Nito Mestre, and the two fused their bands to give birth to Sui Gineris. In 1972, the band released their first LP, Vida, and quickly became popular among Argentine teenagers. Winter Confessions, their second LP, was released in 1973. This album showcased higher production values and better studio equipment and was very successful commercially. Unfortunately, I'm not able to play any of the music off this album due to copyright, so let's look at some more details. The band started as an electric band, but soon became an acoustic duo. During a tour of Mar del Plata, they were signed by Jorge Alvarez for the talent label. In a period dominated by explosive bands like Color Humano or Pescado Rabioso, acoustic songs were a risky bet. The duo's first live performance was documented in film. There doesn't seem to be a single release for this album. And looking at the track listing, generally the first song is put there because it is deemed to be the strongest song on the album. Looking for a review of that song, I found this one that gives it a 3.52 rating out of 5 from 17 ratings. Although I couldn't include it due to copyright, I really enjoyed this song. I'm really enjoying this series and getting to hear some different music from some different places. So thank you again for the comments for these groups. Thank you for watching along with me as I talked about these two artists. If you have an idea for an artist or a city, please let me know in the comments. I'll see you next time.